Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and today we will see how to build a form data and send your request to a web service using LMFI library in your Swift project. Let me remind you that this tutorial is in continuation of the previous tutorial where we are trying to explore the LMFI library. So please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hitting the notification button so that you are notified next time our video comes in. So how do we do all this? Let's get started. this tutorial what we are going to do is we are going to send parameters within the form body and we are going to send it to http bin.org slash post url and if you remember in the previous tutorial we had just sent a basic post request and we had received uh, the status code along with the size and the response time all right so in this tutorial we're going to build the parameter and we're just going to send it okay so how do we start building a parameter firstly since it is a key value pair, I will construct a structure and I will declare a structure and I will create an object of the structure and build the key value pair within it. So let us go up and declare a structure first and we will name it as request body form data key value, which will signify the usage of that okay so it is a request first and it is body tag or the body form data and we are going to store a key value pair okay so i like to name my variables or a class uh, signifying their usage and within this uh, we will add two variables which are key and value so let's write var s key and they are of type string so let's write var s value and that is string as well all right so now we'll go to our action which was send post request which is this and we will have to create an object of our structure so that we build a key value pair within it okay so let's create an object by the name body key value and uh, we will create an object of type request form data key value oops request form data key value and that's it after which we will have to append the data into body key value object okay so let's write body key value dot append all right and in this we will have to call request request body form data key value and let's pass in the key and the value to it now we will have to use unique key names so that uh, when it goes to http bin.org it makes sense to the web service uh, in case if you are having a duplicate key so at the request it will look like this so you have for example uh, you're passing a as a key and you're passing b as a value but in the second append, you're again passing a A, which is a key, which is not unique anymore, and you're passing a C. So at the request, you will get a, uh, the key will look like this, A, and it will have two values within it, which is B and C. Okay, so it will, in some cases, it is not practical to send a request like this, and I will always recommend to use a unique key uh, to send the request to your web services. Okay, so if you have a, a name value pair or a key value pair, always use unique keys. Okay, so let us write uh, A to this and uh, we will write B for the value. Similarly, let us write another append statement as well. Let's copy this and we will write C and D. We'll write one more. We'll write E and an f okay so we have done our append statements and the body key value is populated with the key value pair okay now uh, we will have to make certain changes to the way in which the lmfi request is sent okay so in the previous tutorial what we've done is we have uh, called the http bin.org slash post method or the url excuse me and we had created a data serializer object of 
the success codes that we had and we had created a sample request variable of HTTP method and we had sent a post request to it okay so this is what we have done this will always remain the same for this tutorial as well and only thing that is going to change for this is calling the af that is lmfire.request method over here we are going to change this to af.upload and we will have to currently comment this out so let us see where the blocks are getting end it's right here okay so let's comment this out if you want to refer to the previous tutorial uh, you may refer it i will add the link of the previous tutorial to the description box all right and i will just create a new line here and i will write uh, af dot upload okay and we will have to use the multi-part form data method which is uh, this one okay so multi-part form data and we will have to add or we'll have to pass the SURL method in the second argument. All right, so over here, we will have to create a closure for the multi-part form data, and we will have to add this right here. Okay, so we'll write multi-part form data in, okay, and we will have to specify the value to the multi-part form data. Now, how do we do this? Now, we have built the body key value, and uh, it has got our key value pairs so we will have to iterate through the body key value and build up the multi-part form data variable or the object to it okay so how do we do it we will write a for loop over here so let's write for and we'll have to create a variable form data and body key value and over here we will have to add or write a statement which is multi-part form data dot append and we will have to use the data method okay so let's write data and we will have to use form data dot s value which is our value and we will typecast it to utf8 okay and with the name which is s uh, key so which is form data dot s key All right so we have kind of uh, pass the value from form data object into multi-part form data this is what you have done over here next we will have to send this request okay so how do you send a request we will have to pass in the surl variable which we have declared earlier and uh, let's write it over here which is surl and that's it and now we will have to specify the uh, the method okay um, by default, when you send a request to a web service, I have already spoken of in the previous tutorials, is that when you send a web service request to any web service, by default, it will be a get request, unless and until you explicitly mention it as post, okay? So over here, I will have to add another method or another parameter and specify it as post. So after doing this, a good way to know is like, how long has a request taken to process at the web service end or the at the server end when you send in a request from here uh, it is good practice in your applications to provide a weight cursor or a progress bar okay so in order to do that we will add another method which is dot upload progress and let's call it over here and we will write add another closure to it which is progress in so over here what you can do is you can just write print and write cg float and you can specify the progress okay so let's write progress dot fraction completed and this is all that you need to do okay so uh, in your real world uh, examples if you want to upload uh, an image okay to your web service and uh, you can actually get to know the progress of uploading the image to your server okay so when you use dot upload progress method and you use this statement over here it will actually tell you the progress okay it will be in fractions it will be in decimals okay so you can uh, use it in your uh, application 
All right, so next you have already sent a request to LMFIR. You know the progress, but you need to get a response back from the web service, isn't it? So for this, we will have to write a response statement. Okay, we'll have to call the response method similar to what we have done in the previous tutorials. It is similar to this. So I will still explain to you and rewrite it for this tutorial. Okay, so let's call dot response. Okay, and we will have to write a closure for it as well. So let's write response in, response in. And uh, over here, uh, what we have to do is we will have to first check if there is an error in a response. Okay, so let's write if if response dot error is equal to nil okay so this will ensure that we have a good response or a clear response without errors okay so first what we have to do is uh, we will have to create a variable okay so that we will be able to save the response in that variable and show it in our console okay so let's create a variable first which is response string sorry response string and we will uh, create it of the type string okay so let's write string next we will just set a empty value to the variable so let's write response uh, string okay and just pass an empty value to it okay let's move down and over here, what you are going to do is we will have to check the data property of the response. Okay, so uh, let's write if statement over here and let's write response dot data is not equal to nil. So that means we have the data returned back from the web service and let's write it to the response string variable. Okay, so let's write response string is equal to and the value of uh, the data okay so we will have to typecast it so that it is shown or saved into the response string variable okay so let's write string and we will have to add response dot data and this will be in bytes okay so i think we will have to add over here as bytes okay and uh, let's write response dot data and we will have to give an encoding to it which is utf8 Let's write UTF-8 as well to it and let's close this. Okay, so this is how you uh, will enter. What is the problem here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so we have fixed this and I hope there's no error. Okay, now uh, we have written an if block. Okay, let's write an else to it as well. Let's write a response string okay and we will just simply pass in the value of the response into the response string variable okay so let's write a response dot response dot description okay uh, in some cases uh, the reason why i have write i have written the if and else statement is in my in my past experiences whenever our web service has been called and uh, there are instances where the description uh, property is nil okay or the data property is nil for that matter and that is the reason why this is a fallback uh, statement okay so in any case uh, even if the data property is nil you'd be still be able to get the response back through the description property okay now we have got the response string variable set now let us show it the value in our console so let's write a print statement let's write print uh, and we will say response string and we will pass in an empty value to it as well as an optional statement and next uh, you have got the response back so this is the uh, metadata the complete uh, metadata of the response now from this you need to pick out the status code okay so earlier uh, we had seen the status code as 200 uh, in some cases we have seen 400 as well so you will have to pick out the response code from it okay so in any case uh, whenever you try to uh, deem that the uh, response is okay uh, the the web service will always return you error code 200 okay so this is just for your knowledge i'll just write print and over here it's easy for us to print or pick out 
the response code that is from the response property and we will say uh, status code dot status code yeah that's it didn't okay print sorry okay so now you have the response uh, and the status code okay so uh, what we are also interested to know is the length of the response okay so for that we will have to first create a variable of type data so let's create a response data and which is of type ns data all right and over here uh, we will have to set the value of uh, response dot data property into response data okay so let's write response data is equal to response dot data as ns data okay so you have the response data variable filled up now uh, it is quite easy for us to get the length of the data okay okay so let's create a variable and let's write i data length okay and let's write response data dot length okay so you will pass the the length uh, into the i data length and uh, after which we will just write print let's write size and bytes okay so let's write size okay and i will use string interpolation here which is by passing i data length okay and since it is bytes i will add the units as well to it which is bytes okay so this is how you get the length of your response how about getting the response time okay so let's do that as well let's write print and uh, we will say response time okay and let's write response dot metrics dot task interval dot duration okay so you got the response time as well and uh, i think this is in uh, seconds okay so if you want to have it in milliseconds you can multiply this by thousand okay so i'm not doing that for this tutorial i'll just leave it right here all right so our code looks okay uh, let's build and see whether we have any issues okay there are no errors uh, let me bring out my console and uh, let's run this on a simulator we will use 11 pro and we'll run this All right, so the application is up and running on the simulator. Let's click the post request button and we will see what we have here. Let's maximize this. Okay, so we have the response back from the HTTP bin.org URL. And uh, as you can see, we have the form data filled up with the key value pair. We have the status code, which is 200, which is okay. And we have the size in bytes and uh, here we have the response in seconds so you can multiply this the entire block to milliseconds by 1000 so this is how you build a form data and send your request to a web service using lm file library i hope you like this video and if you have any doubts please reach me out in the comment section and please like and subscribe to our channel and see you until next time cheers